Mr. Broder. And I'm Mr. Broder. And together we are the Charlatans. Take 49 million. Take 49 million. Uh, today we're going to be reading one of my favorite short stories, Seventh Grade, by Gary Soto. On the first day of school, Victor stood in line half an hour before he came to a wobbly card table. He was handed a packet of papers, a computer card, in which he listed his one elective, French. He always spoke Spanish and English, but he thought someday he might travel to France where it was cool, not like Fresno, where summer days reached 110 degrees in the shade. There were rivers in France and huge churches, fair-skinned people everywhere, the way there were brown people all around Victor. Besides Teresa, a girl he had liked since they were in catechism class at St. Teresa's was taking French too. With any luck, they'd be in the same class. Teresa's going to be my girl this year, he promised himself, as he left the gym full of students in their new fall clothes. She was cute. Good math, too. Victor thought as he walked down the hall to his homeroom. He ran into his friend Michael Torres by the water fountain that never turned off. They shook hands, Raza style, and jerked their heads at one another in a saluto de gato. How come you're making a face, asked Victor. I ain't making no face, essay. This is my face, he said, as his face changed during the summer. He had read a GQ magazine that his older brother had borrowed from the bookmobile and noticed that all the male models had the same look on their faces. They would stand, one arm around a beautiful woman, and scowl. They would sit in a pool, their rippled stomachs dark with shadow, and scowl. They would sit at dinner tables, cold drinks in their hands, and scowl. It works, Michael said. He scowled and let his upper lip quiver. His teeth showed along with the ferocity of his soul. Belinda Reyes was walking by a while ago, and she looked at me, he said. Victor didn't say anything, though he thought his friend looked pretty strange. They talked about the recent movies, basketball, the parents, and the horrors of picking grapes in, over, in order to buy their fall clothes. Picking grapes was like living in Siberia, except hot and more boring. What classes are you taking? Michael said, scowling. Um, French. How about you? Spanish. I ain't even good at it, even if I'm Mexican. I'm not either, but I'm better at it than math. Thanks for sure. A That's for sure. A tinny three-beat bell propelled students to their homerooms. The two friends socked each other in the arm and went their ways. <clears throat> Victor thinking, man, that's weird. Michael thinks making a face makes him handsome. On the way to his homeroom, Victor tried to, sco tried to scowl. He felt foolish until out of the corner of his eyes, he saw a girl looking at him. Um, he thought, maybe it works. He scowled with greater conviction. In homeroom, roll was taken, emergency cards passed out, and they were given a bulletin to take home to their parents. The principal, Mr. Belton, spoke over the crackling, crackling loudspeaker, welcoming students to a new year, new experiences, and new friendships. The students squirmed in their seats, ignored him. They were anxious to go to first period. Victor sat calmly, thinking of Teresa, who sat two rows away, reading a paperback novel. This would be his lucky year. She was in his homeroom, probably be in his English and math classes, and of course, French. The bell rang for first period and the students heard it noisily through the door. Only Teresa lingered, talking with the homeroom teacher. So, you think I should talk to Miss Gaines? She asked the teacher. She would know about ballet. She'd be a good bet, the teacher said, and then added, or the gym teacher, Miss Garza. V Victor lingered, keeping his head down, staring at his desk. He wanted to leave when she did, so he could bump into her and say something like, what the heck, clever. Yeah, he watched her on the slide. As she turned to leave, he stood up and hurried to the door, where he managed to catch her eye. She smiled and said, hey, Victor. He smiled back and said, yeah, that's me. His brown face flushed. <laughs> Why, Ed, and he said, hi, Teresa, or how was your summer, or something nice. As she walked down the hall, Victor walked the other way, looking back, admiring how gracefully she walked, one foot in front of the other. So much for being in the same class, he thought. As he trudged to English, he practiced scowling. Now, this is what seventh grade's like. Be happy you're going into sixth. Yeah, I know. <laughs> In English, they reviewed the parts of speech. Mr. Lucas, a portly man, waddled down the aisle asking, What's a noun? Uh, wait. Yeah, that's uh, a person, place, or thing, said the class in unison. 
Yes, now somebody give me an example of a person. Uh, you, uh, Victor Rodriguez. Teresa, oh my god, Teresa. Oh no, he's got a bad. <laughs> Some of the girls giggled. They knew he had a crush on Teresa. He felt himself blushing again. Oh my Correct, god. Correct, Mr. Lucas said. Now, provide me with a place. Mr. Lucas called on the freckle kid who answered Teresa's house with a kitchen full of big brothers. Hmm. This is you. After English, Victor had Matt, his weakest subject. He sat in the back by the window, hoping he would not be called on. Victor understood most of the problems, but some of the stuff looked like the teacher made it up. As she went along, it was confusing, like the inside of a watch. After math, he would... Uh... Yeah. After math, he had a 15-minute break. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh... And then social studies with yeah. Mr. Agar. And finally, lunch. What? No, it wasn't with Mr. Agar. Of course it is. Who else would you have social studies with in 7A? Uh, he bought a tuna casserole. Uh, they could be. Then they'd have Mrs. Shirtliff. He bought a tuna casserole with butter rolls, some fruit cocktail, and milk. He sat with Michael, who practiced scaling between bites. Girls walked by and looked at them. See what I mean, Vic? Michael scowled. They love it. See what I... Oh, yeah, I guess so. They ate slowly, Victor scanning the horizon for a glimpse of Teresa. He didn't see her. She must have brought lunch, he thought, and is eating outside. He scraped his plate and left Michael, who was busy scowling at a girl two tables away. Oh my god. I know. Is this scowling work or something? Um, he thinks it does. Do you think it works? Is this a scowl? That's a good scowl. I don't even know what a scowl is. It's a kind of, it's a, that sort of angry face. Do you think it might be a vocab word? I think it might be a vocab word. Yeah. This is you, a small triangle? Oh, yeah. The small triangle shaped canvas. Campus. Campus. Bustled with student wear. Are they in college? No, they're in seventh grade, dude. Oh. The small triangle shaped campus bustled with students talking about their new classes. Everybody was in a sunny mood. Victor hurried to the bag lunch area and where he sat down and opened his math book. He moved his lips as if he was reading. But in his mind was somewhere else. He raised his eyes slowly, looking round. No Teresa. He lowered uh, his eyes, pretending to study, when, then looked slowly to the left. No Teresa. Teresa's his one mind. One track, Teresa mind, yeah. yep. He turned the page in the book and stared some more at the math problems that scared him because he knew he'd have to do them eventually. He looked to the right. No, still no sign of her. He stretched out lazily an attempt to disguise his snooping. Then he saw her. She was sitting with a girlfriend under a plum tree. Victor moved to a table near her and daydreamed about taking her to a movie. Huh. When the bell sounded, Teresa looked up. Their eyes met. She smiled sweetly and gathered her books. Her next class was French, same as Victor's. They were among the last students to arrive in class, so all the good desks in the back had already been taken. Victor was uh, forced to sit near the front a few desks away from Teresa while Mr. Bueller wrote French words on the chalkboard. The bell rang and Mr. Bueller wiped his hands, turned to the class and said, Bonjour. Bonjour. Braved a few students. Bonjour. Victor whispered in wonder if Teresa, what the heck, yeah. heard him. He must impress her, right? Mr. Bueller said that if students studied hard, at the end of the year they could go to France and be understood by the populace. One kid raised his hand. What's well, populous? The people, the people of France. Mr. Bueller asked if anyone knew French. Victor raised his hand, wanting to impress Teresa. The teacher beamed and said, Très bon, parlez-vous français? Victor didn't know what to say. I know what that means. Well, you do, but Victor does not. Do you know how to speak French? Very good, thanks okay. for the translation. Uh, the teacher wet his lips, asked something else in French. The room grew silent. Victor felt eyes staring at him. He tried to bluff his way out by making some noises that sounded French. La me vave me con grandma. <laughs> he said uncertainly. Mr. Bueller, wrinkling his face in curiosity, asked him to speak up. Great rose bushes of red bloomed on Victor's cheeks. A river of nervous sweat ran down his palms. He felt awful. Teresa sat a few desks away, no doubt thinking. He was a fool. Without looking at Mr. Bueller, Victor mumbled, Frenchy, oh we oui, we oui, gee in September. <laughs> Mr. Bueller asked Victor to repeat what he said. 
French T wee wee gee in September. Victor <laughs> repeated. Mr. Bueller understood the boy didn't know French and turned away. He walked to the blackboard and pointed to the words on the board with his steel edged ruler. Les bateaux. Les said. bateaux. The students repeated. Les bateaux est sous lui. He said. Les bateaux est sous lui. Victor was too weak from failure to join the class. He stared at the board and wished he'd taken Spanish, not French. Better yet, he wished he could start his life over. He had never been so embarrassed. He bit his thumb until he tore off a sliver of skin. <laughs> <laughs> the bell sounded for fifth period and Victor shot out of the room, probably also avoiding the stairs for everything else he just did uh, at the kids, but had to return for his math book. He looked sheepishly at the teacher who was erasing the board and then wiped his eyes in terror at Teresa who stood in front of him. I, I didn't know you spoke French, she said. That was good. Oh my god, he said wee oui, wee oui, gee in September. But I don't think she understood that he doesn't speak French, oh so god. she's impressed. That's good. Go ahead. This Mr. Bruler looked at Victor and Victor looked back. Oh, please don't say anything, Victor pleaded with his eyes. I'll wash your car, mow your lawn, walk your dog, anything. I'll be your best student and I'll clean your erasers after school. What's so good about cleaning your erasers? That's something we used to do when we had erasers. <laughs> Mr. Beeler shuffled through his papers on his desk. He smiled, hummed as he sat down to work. He remembered his college years when he dated a girlfriend in borrowed cars. She thought he was rich because each time he picked her up, he had a different car. It was fun until he had spent all his money on her and had to write home to his parents because he was broke. Victor couldn't stand to look at Teresa. His, he was sweaty with shame. Well, yeah, I picked up a few things from movies, book, and movies and books and stuff like that. They left class together. Teresa asked him if he could help her with French. Sure, in time. I won't be bothering you, will I? Bonjour, Teresa said. Um, no, oh, no, 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 I won't be bothered. Bonjour, she said, leaving him outside her next class. She smiled and pushed wisps of hair from her face. Yeah, right, bonjour, Victor said. He turned and headed to his class. The rose bushes of shame on his face became bouquets of love. Teresa's a great girl, he thought, and Mr. Bueller's a good guy. He raced to a metal shop, and after a metal shop, there was a biology, and after biology, a long sprint to the public library, where he checked out the three French checks, check books. He was going to like seventh grade. Yes! He didn't deserve that girlfriend. He doesn't. Why not? He doesn't speak French. But it was the most simple at, question. At the end, why did he check out three textbooks? So that he could teach her? So that he can actually learn the thing he said he wasn't able to do, right? Or said he wasn't. And he, the teacher was just saying, were you speaking French? You could have just said, wait, you could have just said that, yes! Okay, well, you'll have some good advice for people going into seventh grade. What? Is that what you, they ask at the beginning of the year? Uh, well, what do you mean, what do they ask? Never mind. Bye-bye, and welcome to the Charlotte Slate of the Beauty Operatives. <laughs>